All right. We are live. All right. So we will not be pouring anything today. We will be talking about the paint poured papers that we did last week. I'm going to show you how those dried and a couple of projects, what you can do with the painted papers. And so that's what we're going to do today. Do a little bit of collaging and cutting out some uh, fun papers and uh, do some like quirky bird kind of quirky owls and things like that. Show you a few different dried uh, projects that are already done. Kind of more of a mixed media art today, but it's all with papers, photo paper that has been paint poured on with fluid acrylics. So these were done last week during the live stream. So yeah, and then here's some larger ones in the beach kind of these were done together. And so those are some of the ones that dried from last week. The two larger beach. I really like uh, these smaller ones really dried nicely. Now a couple of them did. Um, I didn't have the surface that they dried on level. So no worries. We can cut this out and still use this to collage or something. But these work great for all kinds of projects. And so I was going to share some of those ideas. But some people just use this sort of stuff to make, to put the cabochons and make pendants and make uh, jewelry and necklaces and earrings. So here is an example of one that I did. It's got some real nice shimmer to it. It has not been glued into the bezel the metal bezel piece, but this is just one that I cut out of a piece of the painted papers and then glued it on the back. And I use the E6000, E6000 has a jewelry glue that's specifically for jewelry that it's made by E6000. So there's like one example, uh, a couple, I think last year for Christmas, I did a whole series on Christmas paint pours, and one of the videos was Christmas cards. So I paint poured on some of the painted papers, the photo paper, then I ran it through my Cricut. You can run the um, painted papers on the photo paper through the Cricut. You want to have it on the, I have a, um, the Cricut I have is the Explore Air 2, and you want to put it on the setting that's just a little bit past, a little bit thicker than cardstock is what I have it on. So this is just one example of how you could do it. Uh, I've also done ones like this and made almost like a, uh, you can make it a tag for the top of your gift, uh, make it the name tag, or you can do cards i mean there is endless possibilities but um your cricket you can run it through and cut out all kinds of shapes here let me you can kind of see it a little bit better if i put a backing on it so that's just some of the examples and so here's like how i cut out i had a painted paper and then cut them out So there's like example for Christmas cards. Uh, I also have done a lot of like, here's this like Seattle skyline and then just fun little mermaids and monstera leaves. And then we're going to kind of finish this bird up. And so I'm going to show if you don't have a cricket, no worries. You can do the painted papers. Uh, you can cut them out by hand. You can, there's all kinds of options, even if you don't have a Cricut. But here's an example also I did where I um, cut it out with a Cricut, put it on a cardstock, and then put it in a floating frame. So I've got a few of those that I did. Some seahorses and some mermaids. And they're all just done with the, it's got quite the glare with the, but they're painted paper on cardstock and just like a floating frame. So you can do things like that. 
And then I did want to show like last week I had a video that was on these reversible um, uh, panels and they were the from Lo artist loft from Michaels and so this is how this one dried and so it would be a great background to then put some of the shapes on and make kind of like an undersea whole little uh, scene you could do. You know, and so that would be kind of fun. So these are just, you know, a few examples. There's so many examples of what you could do with the painted papers. And so this one is cut out with the Cricut. And then this one's just cut out by hand. So you don't have to have a Cricut. You can use stencils. You can just cut it, cut any shapes out by hand. And so I'll show you a few examples here. So here's one that I had started actually on a live stream here a while back. And he needs another eye. So we're going to cut out another eye. We have to find a coordinating paper. And so I'm pretty sure I used something like this piece. And so um, you just find a good piece that kind of coordinates the eye there. And so then I have kind of him a little nose and some wings here and a body. And so just a fun little quirky way of putting uh, and got some eyelashes there. But how I do, I just cut, cut it out with regular old scissors. You don't have to have a Cricut. Let's kind of match that up so his eye is somewhat uh, same size here. And so you can totally just freehand. You don't have to, I mean, anything. You can do more like mosaics and just use little scraps. And you don't have to do any of this with the painted papers. You can also do this with just like your skins, the leftover, like what would I um, paint on silicone mats sometimes, or I paint on the um, aluminum pans. And so that stuff that's uh, the skins, just the leftover paint that dries, that's what we call in the paint pour world skins. And so you can also do this with skins too, a great way to use up your skins. So here now we have two eyes. I'm going to go ahead and um, do his pu her pupil, his pupil in purple here. So you don't have to have anything fancy. You don't have to have any cricket. You don't have to have. So I'll probably have to come back in because I did have that in black. So you can kind of tell the difference in the colors, but uh, I'll do that. So just fun way to use up of some of the scraps. He can be on the background here. It's kind of busy on that background, but I could also put it on. Oh, hello, hello. I got all distracted and people have come in and said hello and I'm not even paying attention. Hello, Janice. How are you? I'm doing really well. We're doing well here. How are you? And hello, Whitney. How are you doing? Thank you guys for stopping by. I um I got all distracted with what I was doing and didn't even look up over here at the chat. <laughs> so what we have here is um I do uh some of the paint pouring. I just put some of the fluid acrylics on photo paper. And then I was showing some examples of what you can do with your photo papers once they dry. So last week's live stream, I actually did these ones and these ones were taped down. So that's why they kind of have somewhat of a border to them where I um, removed the tape. And so these are how some of the ones dried from last week. So some of them dried just beautifully. Then uh, my surface was not level for a couple of them. So no worries, I'll just cut some of these out into other shapes or use it as a background for other things. Lots of mixed media stuff. So these are just some of the examples of last week and how they dried. But you can use them for cards. You can use them for just like anything. 
You can also just frame them. Um, I like to get these, uh, I'll show you in just a moment. I like this one. This one turned out real pretty. I like this, the, both the pink ones turned out real pretty. Uh, different, brighter pink and then more subtle rosy pink. Uh, but those ones turned out beautifully. But I like to get these uh, from the Dollar Tree. These cheapo, these are 3.1 by 3.75 inches. And you can use these or even smaller pieces and uh, frame them and make little things. But you can also stamp on these too. I have an example where I have stamped on one. Well, we'll get to that example. I'll find it here in a minute. But um, so here's an example of some of the ones from last week and how they dried. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love mixed media too. I was actually very into mixed media and like paper crafts and stuff before I ever got into paint pouring. So I like to kind of mix the two. So, so these are some of the ones from last week. So these will make perfect to cut out fun shapes. I think this one would make some fun like undersea some coral or uh Maybe even a turtle or a seahorse. These are just some of those from last week that I did. <laughs> Actually, Mike got the bathroom. The Well, we're doing both of our bathrooms. So the uh, first bathroom, he got it all done. It looks so nice. Uh, before, the bathtub was like a six inch deep, like, I mean, it was like six inches deep for a bathtub, and it was like this rusty red pink color. It was just awful. Now it's nice, bright white. The surround is nice, bright white. It just really brightens it up. It looks so nice, but these are just some examples. Oh, fun cards and heavy metal steampunk, steampunk canvases. I love steampunk. That is awesome. Super cool. Um, not this last time that we went to the, we went to the Oregon um, Aquarium, the Oregon Coast Aquarium in Newport, Oregon. They, uh, they have like themes once a year, they change their theme. And about a year ago, two, no, gosh, it's got to be like almost two, three years ago. The last couple of years is hard to remember how long it's been. Time has been kind of crazy. But um, about two, three years ago, we went and it was steampunk uh, themed. They had so much fun because it was at the aquarium. So they had like a lot of underwater ocean steampunk theme art on the wall it was so cool i have some pictures somewhere of like steampunk uh seahorses and steampunk uh, uh humpback wells and really neat artwork so these are just examples of last week what how they dried from last week or it's kind of a sunset So, yeah, um, I'm so excited to have a just nice bright white. It just uh, it just brightens up because the bathroom is a very small bathroom. So it just brightens up with a small space. And we put in uh, white wainscoting. So like uh, the white wainscoting halfway up the wall. Oh, it looks nice. So these are all the ones from last week. So. Those will be fun to do some stuff with. I think this one will make a fun seahorse or turtle. So I'm going to set those ones aside and show you guys a few more examples of what I've done and what. make sure I don't take his her little nose there. So those are some of the examples. And then uh, see, I've just like kind of layered a funky, whimsical uh, kind of uh, landscape here some rolling hills, just kind of funky, whimsical thing that I did here a while back. And these are just glued on. I use uh, matte medium, 
but uh, you can just use glue, Monch Podge. I happen to be allergic to those. So for some reason, I am allergic to Elmer's glue, school glues, um, Mod Podge, but I'm not allergic to the matte medium. So that's what I use to glue. It's, it's kind of, I'm not sure why that one I don't seem to have any problems. But so these are just examples. And uh, some of the examples of some of the ones that have dried in the past. I'm trying to find the one that I have stamped on. So here's also an example that I was kind of working on. It's kind of a mess right now. But um, I was kind of, I took these painted papers and I made strips. And then I was just weaving the strips to kind of together here. And so um, I was making kind of like a weaved mat. Let's get some of these ones that are sticking here out of the way that you can kind of more see what I was. So I also thought it would be fun to take these and I just put it in my paper trimmer, just like a paper cutter. And then I um, kind of just weaving these strips here. And kind of seeing how that turned out. That was kind of fun. You just weave them, you know, like up, under, up, under, go back and forth. I was just kind of going different colors and fun little example. And you don't have to, you can just cut them with regular scissors. You can cut them with a paper cutter. But another example, if you don't have a um, Cricut. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, a weave is a great idea. And it's a great idea to also like, you can incorporate some watercolored papers, you can incorporate just uh, scrapbooking papers, uh, plain cardstock to kind of break up the, uh, all the busyness, just put in some plain cardstock. So many ideas. Yeah, at the uh, aquarium right now is the Ray Troll exhibit. And so Ray Troll is an amazing artist. Have you guys ever heard of Ray Troll? He's an awesome, awesome artist. But yeah. I, but uh, oh, if the numbers ever, it's kind of crazy right now to be traveling. We can't be traveling. My doctor said no traveling. <laughs> so Here's some examples, and then uh, here's one that I did where I just did kind of a gradient background, and then I added on this. Uh, at one point, I got a drop of paint on it, so I do need to just kind of put something there. I can put another little uh, seahorse or fish, or you can cover that right up, or I can just paint it in since it's just a gradient background but I have a bunch of coral and so it's not done kind of a work in progress, but there's kind of an example. Yes, the, we actually, um, we have that shirt, fish and chips, the fish and chips shirt. Uh, uh, we have several of his shirts. We have fish and chips. Um, what is what is the different ones that we had gotten this last time? We we got some just recently. I haven't even gotten to wear mine yet. Uh, but we have a couple of Ray Troll shirts. He's actually a friend of uh, Mike's, a fam, uh, family member of Mike's. He's a personal friend of uh, them. So this is another example where I just did some geometric shapes. Yeah, there's one that says rock and roll. Uh, fun little fishing kind of themed uh, shirts. But just an example, I painted the canvas. This is an eight by eight. I, uh, uh, I painted it gold and then I just put these shapes, these geometric shapes down. This is another just dip that I did. And so I have these uh, mermaid tail mermaid that I could put on there. I haven't quite decided because she kind of got a little bit damaged. I'm not sure if you can see another piece of paper stuck to her. So I could either touch that up or I might use it here or somewhere else. I'm not sure.
I thought I had set one aside. It was really hard to see. So I got a, these are just some examples of I've cut out with the Cricut and you can kind of see how intricate the Cricut cuts. It cuts so really intricate. But then you have to pull out each little individual piece and uh, then get it uh, glued down. So then that's the hard part. I might have set that other piece aside somewhere else, but I have rubber stamped on some of these. And so um, I was going to show you that, but... That's all right. I'll show you that another time. But um, you can you can rubber stamp. You can stencil on them. Add a whole new on top. You can stencil words. You can cut out words. You can do just anything with these. I have so many here that I may be missing. I had I had rubber stamped in silver, so it's kind of hard to see it unless I like move the shimmer. <laughs> But so yeah, we've got our little bird bird here. I kind of think the bird might would look better on a plain background. Let's see. Cause it's almost too busy. So I just have it an edge. It doesn't even matter that there's because it's going to tuck right up under there. And this was just freehand cut out real quickly. So tuck the wings in there. So I kind of like it on the background, but we would need to put little feet on. Here's the. So what do you guys think? I think it's less busier on the plain background. Thank you. Awesome. So happy you guys had heard about that. Yeah, it's kind of an owl. I kind of like a quirky owl, you know, like a whimsical owl, kind of whimsy owl. <laughs> yeah. Kind of going for an owl look, kind of a cartoony, funky owl. So, I mean, it's so many things you can do with these. Love these little Dollar Tree um, ones. And then I also was going to mention, there's all the wood cutouts. So I paint poured on this one. But you can use these wood cutouts as a, uh, you can draw around it and then cut it out and use it as a stencil. You can use all the Dollar Tree cheapo wood cutouts that they have. Keep one or two always aside to use as like a stencil. That's a great way to freehand too. But yeah, we got a little owl. So what do you guys think about this? Uh, I was thinking about next week also continuing with this uh, painted papers. I kind of been having fun with these painted papers. So here's kind of like a abstract kind of layered uh, scene here. And then, so I was thinking about doing some more of these painted papers and then we could get back to it here next week. You can even put a river down the middle or put a river in here somehow. So many different options. Yeah, I kind of think he um, pops out. So when he was on the, this background's a little bit busier for him. So uh, you can always use these as backgrounds and use your scrapbook paper or cardstock or even like watercolor papers that are a little bit mellower to then collage on these using these as backgrounds. I mean, there's so many options. But yeah, I think the little owl kind of looked a little bit better. He kind of pops off the dark a little bit better. But yeah, I like to do these little, all kinds of little. I think I even cut out some. So 
some like you could even do like a Halloween town with Halloween coming. You could do a fun little haunted house scene. Those aren't really looking like haunted houses, but you could spooky them up and make them kind of some haunted houses. Just, I mean, you don't have to be, have a like super big drawing skills. I mean, these are like triangles and squares and so easy. And it's super cheap too, because it's just, uh, I use the Dollar Tree uh, Polaroid photo paper and I paint poured onto the shiny side. Here it is. I was looking and looking and looking for this. Okay, so finally found where I had, it's in silver, so it's a little bit hard to see, but I think the camera is picking that up. You can also come in and um, uh, I just did regular old rubber stamping uh, ink and rubber stamped right on here. So you, um, I've got lots of rubber stamps. So that would be a great one. I like to take then the glass from out of the, that would be a great one for this little intricate frame. Then frame that little area is what it had originally gotten stamped for. And that's just a Dollar Tree frame. I think the stamp was actually originally from the Dollar Tree as well. And then it's just the regular fluid acrylic, just mixed the same as always. A couple of the colors do have silicone in it. And what I did, and I did them on last week's stream. So there's lots of examples on last Wednesday's live stream. But you just take the shiny side of the photo paper, put paint on one of them, smash them together, and then pull them apart. And that's why you get all these cells and kind of a, you can see the striations of where I pulled it apart. But that's how I um, had stamped on some of them. So you can rubber stamp, you can stencil, you can, I mean, just everything. You can make them into magnets. You can, everything is possible. Yes, yes, yes. Great for tags for cards, too. I had showed, let's, so like this one, I cut out in the Cricut, and it's kind of Christmassy. We do our Christmas colors are actually blue. Our Christmas tree is in blue, silver, uh, white. That's kind of our colors. We don't do the traditional green and red. Uh, we've been kind of adding more green and red the last few years because there's just been some cute stuff out. But we've always, our tree has got, our ornaments are all blues and silver. So we use these as our name cards one year. You could just write on the back, tie a little string or ribbon. Cut up, you can punch a little hole through and do it. But yeah, you can use them definitely. Works great for that. So I made uh, some cards as well. These are just cardstock that I folded over and just plain white cardstock. And then I had cut these little cardinals out with uh, the Cricut and uh, glued it on here. But you could cut out ornaments. Uh, you could freehand anything. Or at the um, Christmas time, they'll have at the Dollar Tree, they'll have the wood cutouts but they'll be more like Christmas like they'll have some snowmen and they'll have different shapes use one of those as a stencil and cut out and make them into cards super fun easy way and it's a great way to with the kids or grandkids or anything like that too. make fun homemade cards and you can personalize them and everything so oh we can't talk about <laughs> See, that made me laugh to where I coughed. <laughs> Gotta get a drink just a second. <laughs> uh, Mike says, we can't talk about Christmas until I get my hands on some eggnog. <laughs> All right. He loves his eggnog. It's usually out around your birthday. So it'll be out soon, uh, as soon as your birthday comes. <laughs> so... Yeah, I love some eggnog, but uh, just if it's really, really cold and just like a little bit. It's so rich. I can't have very much, but I do like just a little bit. And if it's uh, really cold, it has to be just so cold. I do not like it once it's any sort of warm. 
but yeah, you could use these as like the card fronts too. You could cut these out and use these as card fronts. And these are some of the ones that we taped down. So we taped the edges and uh, I used regular masking tape. I did have somewhat of a hard time getting it up. I do suggest using the blue painter's tape. If you have blue painter's tape or washi tape, washi tape also works really well to tape the edges. So... It's all I ever want for my birthday. <laughs> so yeah, you can do all kinds of things. You can do the cutouts. You can do kind of more like scenes and then try to throw a kind of a mermaid tail on there. And then you can throw them in the, uh, I like these ones because they're just on plain cardstock background and they're in a floating frame. This one, these ones are in my Etsy shop, actually. But they're with the painted papers. So they look real neat in the, you know, on just plain cardstock in a photo, photo uh, floating frame. And that's the two glasses where you can kind of see through the glass here. <laughs> you know, yeah. But yeah, yeah. Uh, Lots and lots of examples. I just love these painted papers. And I kind of con concentrate my channel on like doing things on a budget, kind of beginner and stuff. And so these are a great budget thing. They're a great way to like try to um, use different color combinations, you know, try to kind of experiment with color combinations without having to waste a canvas. They're a great way to use up like leftover paint if you have any leftover paint you need to use up. But yeah. So. But let's go ahead. Let's make another bird here. Let's kind of do one of these quirky birds, but I'm going to go ahead and do another one. Let's cut one out get us some room and we'll do the bird right here on this cardstock. So I'll show you also, oops, sorry, I hit the uh, tripod a little bit. Just gonna freehand kind of a, a rectangle, kind of a rounded off rectangle. I think I want the thing, the head to be this color. So when I'm cutting out, what's easiest for me is to just like cut just all around just real quickly and get all that excess out of my hands. And then I cut. So I just get that set aside and out of my hands. And then I'm able to more concentrate on cutting better. So when I'm concentrating on cutting, especially if I'm cutting something real intricate with lots of details. So like. This was cut with the Cricut. I could, this would be hard to cut. But if I were to cut something real intricate like this, this coral here, I am not moving my scissors. You're holding your scissors plain. You're holding your scissors still and you're moving the paper through the scissors. That's a much easier way to cut. So I hold my scissors straight and I move the paper instead of the scissors around the paper especially for like real intricate stuff. It's just much easier. So, all right, we have a bird head here. I think that would look real nice. I'll got to clean up the edge a little bit, did that quickly, but let's find a color to do his body or her body, kind of a quirky, whimsical owl. I think I want to do the wings because this has kind of a real wispy look to it. So we're going to set this one aside for the wings. Then I'm going to grab, let's do something kind of 
contrasting a little because we've got a lot of purples and pinks. So I think the body, I'm going to do something like more like this. So like the body on this one was just, uh, I just, because it's going to get tucked under here. So it doesn't matter if the top. So we're going to do like the same right here. So we're going to cut out. Oh, oh, what allergic reactions did I have to the Mod Podge? <laughs> so uh, I get hives really, really bad. Like, let's say 80% of my body, like my whole legs, my completely my legs become hives. My arms become hives. Pretty much just my core does not. I don't get them on my chest or back, but I get my arms, my shoulders, my legs bad. But um, it also must run in my family because my mom has an allergy to uh, like glues and stuff. And my grandma really had an allergy to adhesives and glues because I'm also allergic to like tape, like scotch tape, medical tape, like just getting like medical tape, like after getting your blood work or some, whatever, they'll put some tape on your arm. Uh, it'll take my skin off within minutes. So it's some sort of allergic reaction to adhesives. So it's like tapes and glues. But for some reason, I don't with this, the matte medium. So that's what it's a lot more expensive too. So I wish I could use just glues. But um, like a lot of people will use glue to pour with. I cannot pour with glue. We tried that. So even if I pour with glue and then get it out of the house real quick, or I, I can let it dry outside with ventilation. Oh no, even if I use gloves, do not touch the glue at all. Just having it in the air, it's, it's bad. So uh, that's why I can't use glue as a pouring medium either. So I tried that. So now we're just cutting out the body with kind of this we had a lot of, we're going to have the wings and the head kind of um but yeah that's definitely not off subject at all you guys any questions you have definitely so real freehand just really cut it out freehand so i always like to just cut him out see how he is and then i can always kind of cut any trim like this right here is bugging me it's not quite like a rounded but yeah you can always come in and kind of fix him up and you want him kind of off quirky it's not supposed to be like perfect so yeah it was it was definitely bad and it would last for days these horrible hives I mean like hives this big not just like raised up the, I have pictures and everything somewhere it's bad so nope 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 cannot do glue cannot do anything like that so we're going to do some wings because I think this kind of has like some wispy look this way of almost looks like feathers I think this would look some fun wings so we did these wings on that other one I kind of want to make them just a little bit bigger so I kind of just going to do and I just have a white like chalk marker here and you can use a pencil. You can use anything. I just grabbed whatever. <laughs> and I'm going to grab a different one real quick because that one is drying up. Okay, I got a pencil. So it's going to be hard for you to see the pencil, but... Just kind of freehanding some larger wings. And I like these scissors. These are Exacto brand scissors. But I mean, you can use you know any scissors. But I like these for these smaller things, especially if you're going to get more. Like if you were to stencil out this and then you're going to want to cut the paper like real intricate, you're going to want some smaller scissors. So we're going to cut the first one out. And then we'll use the first one to kind of stencil the second one. So we have matching wings. Just cutting it off there so we have less to hold in our hand. It's just easier. Yeah. 
yeah, no glue. I am not getting that for my birthday or Christmas. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's the C word is banned until <laughs> Mike says. See, I'm one of those ones that likes to like, as soon as Halloween is over, I'll be begging Mike to go ahead and start the uh, decorating the house. I love to decorate for Christmas. Okay, so let's see how what this size looks like. So then when we stencil this, we want to mirror the other one. So I think that would look nice. I think that's a nice size. So we can always kind of uh, adjust the size. You want to, before you glue anything down, you cut out all your pieces, kind of move them around, adjust them how you want. I just tuck this right under there. And so I just cut out a shape kind of similar to that. So now if I cut out, just laid it down and cut out the same shape, we're going to end up with two wings that way. No, we want to mirror it so that we end up with a wing that goes out this way, you know, the right direction. So when we lay it down here and stencil onto this, we don't want to cut it out that way. We want to cut it out turned that way. Where did I set my pencil? I guess we'll grab another one. All right, so just, it doesn't have to be exact. It's just whimsical, you know, fun. Doesn't have to be exact, exact. Just a fun little bird. Just cut it off there and then cut those out. So now we end up with the right side going each way. It's kind of mirrored in a way because we turned it over and cut it. So yeah, we've been real busy around here. Mike got the bathroom done. Uh, that was absolutely a lot of work, a lot more work than I think he thought it was gonna be when he got into it, but he did it, he got it done. It looks amazing. Now he's going to be doing our other bathroom. So uh, we've always had just a shower in there, shower and toilet and sink and, you know, all that. But it hasn't had a bathtub. So it's going to be so amazing to have two new bathtubs in the house. So I'm excited for that. So let's see. Let's try this out, see how it is. Then we need to find some eyeballs. I think that looks pretty good so far. <laughs> the C word. <laughs> so well, let's just try out these eyeballs out for size. Oh, I flung the nose. <laughs> I flung, when I went to pick up the little nose, I flung it on the ground. So let's just try these ones out for size. I like the coloring on that one. Uh, we'll try to put a similar coloring on this one. We'll just might steal that nose actually. Now, the eyes, I think we'll try to find some brighter eyes that'll kind of pop on there because those eyes wouldn't show up very well. But they didn't show up too well on that other one either. <laughs> then we always have to put eyelashes. Definitely have to put eyelashes. Let's find some. I think these eyes, these kind of, if we picked some of these real bright areas, the eyes might really look nice. Pop on there with the green. See, and that's what nice, you have the whole area and you can kind of move around and kind of use this to kind of, oh, I like, you know, this area or, and if you're doing the um, necklaces with the cabochons, you can move your glass pieces around and really see how you like it, you know, before you glue it down. So that's nice as well. So I think that I'm going to cut it out probably just... I kind of really like this there. I might just do two kind of eyeballs right in this area here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut a big strip of this area. And 
and then we'll cut the eyeballs kind of out of that area. So we'll make this fun owl, this fun quirky owl, and then it would look really nice. You can put it in a floating frame. You can put it just in a regular frame. You can also just mount this on the top of a canvas, really, like an old canvas that didn't work out for you. You could always just mount it on there. So I'm thinking eyeballs are looking the, right around in this area, two eyeballs. I'm trying to decide if we want them this way or this way, which is, looks the best. I think maybe if we put them that way. But um, so yeah, next week, next Wednesday, I have not decided. I was thinking about just continuing with this and continu continuing doing some collage, cutting out some more stuff, just giving some more ideas on what to do with these painted papers. We could even do some more painted paper, actual paint some more painted papers as well. I wasn't sure. What do you guys think about that for next week's live stream? These are just kind of some more, same shape as this, but smaller, some kind of uh, rounded off rectangles. So cut them apart and then I'm going to use turning the paper and not the scissors, keeping the scissors still and turning the paper. Just much easier that way. Just rounding those suckers off a little bit. And then you can come in with paint, uh, just permanent markers, paint markers, and kind of play around with giving a pupil or giving some uh, eyelashes. I always have to put some eyelashes, even though I know an owl. I don't even know. I, I would assume an owl does not have eyelashes, but I don't know. Maybe it does. But my owls have to have eyelashes. And these are just the papers that we painted last week. You can put the nose kind of down. So those are just some examples there. Yeah, the first bathroom was the smaller bathroom, so he did not have much room to really move around. So this next bathroom, he'll have a lot more room to maneuver and get the bathtub in there. And so, and he knows once you've already done one, you kind of, um, you know more what to expect and stuff. <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad you are loving all the ideas. Yeah, exactly. It's my own owl that can have eyelashes if it wants. But he's just, she's, I don't know, I would say maybe she's not sure if it's, they are a nice, fun, bright, quirky, whimsical owl. So, and then we got to put also little feet. But yeah, so um, I'm thinking next week we will continue with more of the like underwater theme. I wonder, should we have this second? I'm I'm thinking out loud, cutting out a shape. Is owl supposed to have kind of a little tuft kind of on here? Not like an ear, but almost like a little tuft of feathers. Maybe we need to cut out kind of that similar shape. Huh? But yeah, so uh, I love to do the like backgrounds that are look really uh, uh, like underwater and then do uh, collage different stuff on top, different coral and that's super fun. Let's see, let's see how that looks, if that looks right. That one's a little too pointed, I got to.
with the holidays coming, there's lots of ways to do some fun gifts with the painted papers and do it on a budget. There's kind of a whimsical owl there. So, uh, yeah. And then this one, like this, how this one dried. I love these panels. It dried really nice. In my video, uh, when after the video ended, these over here was a little bit more wider. Um, and so this really, they popped up a few more cells and evolved even, even more of a like underwater oceany look. So I'm not sure if I, I'm kind of thinking I might do some brushwork and paint some uh, uh, coral and stuff in, or I could just go ahead and like collage some coral in. So, I mean, there's so many opportunities. But you could do all kinds of little types of little coral there. Yeah, these are um, the Artist Loft reversible liquid art panels. So they do have exactly the same on the back side. They look exactly, it's a little bit more framed in. So you could really, you could do either side or you could do both how they're done. So um, I just painted on that side and I don't think I will probably paint on the back side. And then I'm going to do some sort of underwater scene. I think I'm going to actually brush it in. Uh, just regular traditional paint it in with acrylics. But yeah, I like I liked how it dried. It dried real nice. Uh, absolutely no warping. It has that frame on it and stuff. So that was a video I did last week. So yeah, so this is the last one I'm going to do for today. But uh, lots of examples of how to, of the photo paper. And this is all painted on the shiny side of the photo paper. And these smaller three by five pieces are Canon. And they worked great. They worked just as well. And then I had also some regular um, eight by 10 pieces that were from um, their Polaroid brand but they come from the Dollar Tree and they come eight in a package. So we had all kinds of different ones. But yeah, you can do just fun little different shaped uh, kind of funky landscapes, uh, anything really. You can weave them like we had done. Oh, and then when I had weaved, so I also just did some, um, brushed some gradient of some greens on to also show like you could do the bird you don't have to do it on just a plain background you don't have to do it on one of the paint poured papers you could also do it just on like a painted background here you know you would want to paint the rest of the sheet but it's just an example of you could also just watercolor do a subtle background with just like a watercolor gradient but um, that was just a paper that I had just was actually sampling out some of these colors and how they kind of blended together. It was a new brand of paint and I was seeing how it blended and it actually didn't blend as well as I would have liked. But yeah, he's kind of getting all wobbled eyed, but so yeah, that's just uh, some examples. But next week I will... Um, do some more and it'll be kind of themed with like underwater stuff. So I'm going to be doing some scenes that are uh, with coral and uh, mermaid and seahorses and turtles. And uh, I think I've said this before, but turtles are my favorite animal. I kind of collect turtles. So I do a lot of turtle stuff. So I would like to do some collage with some different turtles. So, and these all are just painted papers. And this one was just cut out freehand. So you can cut out, I think this was cut out from a, um, maybe a Dollar Tree wood cut out that I then uh, stenciled around and cut it out. So yeah, lots of examples. And you can just use glue, Mod Podge, anything like that. 
And this is just what I use to glue it down. And this is just the Liquitex matte medium. And they do have it in a gloss as well, gloss medium. But yeah. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm so happy to hear that. Uh, I always like to share with everybody. Everybody always asks me, why do you tell everybody your paint recipe and all your techniques? And I, I, I enjoy sharing it with everybody because I have gotten so much joy from the artwork and so much joy from paint pouring that I want to share that with everybody. So thank you. I'm so happy to hear that you're say uh, I'm absolutely an awesome teacher that is so exciting to hear so thank you thank you so yeah um I think we're gonna probably end this about here but uh you, and then we'll do next week we will do some more collage work and then the following week we'll get back into some paint pouring I want to do some kind of fall inspired paint pours and some kind of Halloween inspired paint pours. And then when it gets closer to Christmas time, we'll bring out the painted papers again and we'll do some more Christmas, um, kind of some Christmas cards and gift, uh, little gift tags and stuff like that. So we'll just do one more week with the painted papers and then we'll get back to our regular pouring live. And then closer to Christmas time, we'll bring the painted papers back out. So I like to show some uh, examples of kind of cheaper gifts because you these are just from the Dollar Tree, these frames, and they're fun little intricate kind of Dollar Tree frames, not just the regular old plain ones they have. And so you could just do all kinds of fun gifts. And you can put quotes on them and everything. Uh, do them as gifts with uh, personalizing them with people's names. You can cut out uh, letters and make a personalized sign with somebody's name on it or somebody's uh, last name or something. Great gift ideas. So, yep, Mike is a pretty great guy too. <laughs> that Mike guy is all right, he says. Yeah, he's a pretty good guy too. So yeah, lots and lots and lots of different examples. So we are gonna end it though for this week. And so this week's videos that are coming out, tomorrow is a video with how to do a bunch of flowers, how to do a bottle bottom pour flower, how to do a reverse dip flower, how to do a blown flower without like a bloom recipe with just regular old, paint mixed up traditional way of the paint pouring, not the bloom recipe, but how to blow out a flower. So tomorrow's video is continuing on that basics of paint pour series. And then we have a couple of um, other videos scattered in there. And then I promise the video on the DIY spinner is coming. It is coming. The part we got didn't work. So now we're we're working on it a little bit more to make it bigger and better because we have a small DIY spinner going, but we need to get bigger, 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 bigger. So, all right, guys, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. And I do appreciate it. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. You guys are awesome. So thank you so much for hanging out and we're going to go ahead and get off here and, uh, Always be the change you want to see in the world, guys. Be the change you want to see in the world. So thanks so much for hanging out. And you guys have an awesome rest of your day. Have the awesome rest of your week. Thank you. Thank you.